And now, Mystery Theater. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the terrifying world of your imagination. I have an unusual story for you about a crack in a cellar wall that resists all efforts to repair it. Despite all the learning through the ages, despite the world's great progress in physics, chemistry, biology, there are certain matters which cannot be explained by our computers or our wise men. Matters which may never have a logical explanation. Mr. Carroll, the contractor, was the first to admit that the crack in the wall was beyond him. I'm not a superstitious man, Mrs. Sanford, but something is happening here I, I can't explain. Look at that crack. Not a speck of mortar on it. Looks like it hadn't been touched in a hundred years. But I swear I closed it up not five minutes ago. I swear it. That, that cold draft blowing from it. Like from a tomb. Like from a tomb. Our mystery drama, The Crack in the Wall was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sidney Sloan and stars Celeste Holm. It was a cold, rainy, windy day when Paul and Nora Sandfort laid their child to rest in Green Tree Cemetery. Despite all the soothing words of friends and relatives, Nora's despair was inconsolable. She felt that nothing could ease the pain in her heart caused by the loss of her only child. Our Father, which art in heaven, my darling, I be thy name. my baby, Thank why did you have to die? Nora, darling, please. Our religion teaches us that God, in his infinite wisdom, Don't decided... Don't speak these empty words to me. I accepted that because it never touched me before. I never thought of it. But our daughter, our beautiful, innocent child, just 16. Why? One does not question these matters, Nora. I do question. For the first time in my life, I question. I would do anything. Anything to bring my Ruth back to this world. Nora, please. Now, you know that's impossible. Why? Why? Because our little girl Ruth is dead. Burnt to death. Nothing you can do or say or hope can change that. Nora. Are you busy with something? No. I'm just reading the newspaper. First chance I've had to take a look at it today. The minister was here today, Dr. Fowler. Oh? Said he wanted to see our new house. New? This house is over a hundred years old. Well, new for us, he meant. It's just an excuse to come here, actually. He wanted to know why I hadn't been to church in the last several months. What did you tell him? Oh, I don't know. It was awkward. I said I'd be back next Sunday. Made some excuse about not having felt well lately. Well, I'm glad. About my going back to church? Yes. But more important than that, it means that you're getting over this, this depression, getting out into the world again, beginning to forget. No. No, you're wrong, Paul. I'll never get over wanting my little girl back with me. I'll never forget. Please believe me, Nora. I loved Ruth, too. But I accept the fact that she's gone from us forever. Uh, I'll never accept that. 
Oh, by the way, now I remember what I wanted to remind you about. What? It's about that crack in the cellar wall right in front of the washer and dryer. There's a terrible draft that comes from it. Well, there's no crack there, Nora. No crack? I thought I'd get rheumatism in the cold draft when I did the washing today. It hit you right in the back. No, I, I had that repaired. I paid for it. It's on the general bill for the repairs we had to make on the old house before we could move in. Well, then they cheated you. Charged you and never did the job. You sure? Seems to me that I remember. It's never been done. Those contractors will try. You know, it's Mr. Caro, isn't it? His number's on the telephone stand. Why don't you call him? Oh, it's 7.30, Nora. Well, come to think of it, it's... The only time I could possibly reach him would be at night. He'd be busy all day out on the job. Hello, Miss Carroll? Paul Sanford. I'm sorry to bother you, but one of the items on your bill to me for repairs on my house, uh, item 28, repair crack in cellar wall, north side interior, $45.60. You never closed up that crack. You what? Hold on a minute. Nora, he says he supervised that item himself, mixed the cement for it. Well, just tell him that he's got it wrong. Mr. Carroll, my wife says the crack is still there. It hasn't been repaired. Okay, sometime tomorrow morning? Right, thank you. It's kind of funny. He said he's willing to bet $100 that he completed the work. Mrs. Sanford, I, I'm finished with the job, and I want your okay. Uh, I'll put on the pot and give you a cup of coffee. <laughs> Thanks, I'd appreciate that. Uh, come right down. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Won't be a minute. I'm coming, Mr. Carroll. Mrs. Sanford, the strangest thing. What did you say, Mr. Carroll? Uh, look at that wall. Oh, dear. Another crack? No, it's it's not another crack. What? It's the same crack. I I just filled it with cement. But you couldn't have. It looks old and dry. Look at my hands. They're still covered with cement. Here are my tools, my trowel, my, my hammer and chisel. I, I could swear it was closed up not five minutes ago. And, and that cold draft blowing from it. Like from a... A tomb. Like from a tomb. Oh, Mr. Sanford. Come in, come in. Thank you, Dr. Fowler. Well, come into the study. We won't be disturbed there. There, right this way. Huh. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Please forgive me for interrupting you at this hour. I don't quite know how to begin. As you know, we've been through a horrible experience. Yes. Losing your daughter in that fire. It's her only child. Just 16. Uh, Mr. Sanford, you must get hold of yourself. Yes. You... You see, I've been holding my emotions back for months. I had to be strong for Nora's sake. She's taken this very hard, yes, I know. And she hasn't gotten over it. It shook her to the very foundation of her belief. I gathered that it's been only recently that you both came back into the church. She is... She's definitely twisted mentally. Her, her preoccupation is with a crack in the cellar wall, which she says cannot be repaired. What? Well, there's a long, jagged crack in the cellar wall. It's been there since we bought the house earlier this year, after our other house burned down. Have you tried to have this crack filled with cement? Oh, yes, yes, we tried. The way you say that is very strange. Well, I paid Carol the builder for repairs on the house. He was certain that he'd repaired the wall. However, he came back and patched up the crack again when he asked for my wife's okay on the job after he'd finished. 
they went down to the cellar and looked. The crack was open again. I, I don't understand. Neither do I. Caro said that he'd not left the cellar, that he'd called my wife to look at it. What's your explanation? I have none, Dr. Fowler, none. Is that you down in the cellar, Paul? Uh, yes, Nora, I'm... I'm filling up the crack in the wall with cement. Do you think that's wise, Paul? Wise? Well, I thought you wanted the wall repaired. Kara won't come here anymore, so... Well, that's what I mean. Paul, there's some very good reason why that wall resists repair. Well, that's a strange way of putting it. Wall resists repair. So you thought the wall had... I don't quite know how to put this. As though the wall had... Had a will of its own? Nora, that's ridiculous. Is it? Mr. Carroll tried twice to fill that crack. He gave up. Yes, I know. I just received a check from him for $45.60, refunding the money I paid him for the job. Come on, let's go upstairs. This old cellar gives me the creeps. Paul! Look! My God. It's disappearing. The cement... It... The cement I just put into the cracks dissolving into thin air. Mr. Edmund, I'm I'm calling about this house you sold us. No, 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 no it, it's a good, solid old house. It's just that my wife isn't happy here. We're all alone, as you know. It just isn't right for us. Yes, I know. I'll, I'll have to take a loss if I change now, but I'm prepared for that. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow, around five, okay? Good. Goodbye, Mr. Edmonds. Pa, who was that on the phone? Oh, Nora, I, I called Mr. Edmonds. The real estate man? That's right. You're thinking of selling? Well, I thought you'd want to get out of here too, Nora. Whatever gave you that idea? Now, that's a very strange attitude. Don't you know what this all means? No. No, I, I don't understand it. Frankly, it scares me. Ruth is trying to reach us. What are you talking about? It was just two days ago. I was lying in bed. You were sound asleep. I heard the clock chime three. I felt something urging me to leave the bedroom and go down into the cellar. Nora... I've got to take you to a doctor. Paul, I'm not out of my mind. I tell you, our daughter is calling to me. She's trying to get to Darling, me. Darling, Nora, listen to me. What you're saying doesn't make sense. Our child is dead, Nora. Burnt to death. I spoke to her. I spoke to her through the crack in the cellar wall. You what? I spoke to our roof. And she spoke to me. Paul, wake up. Huh? Wake up. Uh, Nora, what time is it? Shh, quiet. Now, do you hear? Hear what? She's calling to me. Our little girl. She wants us. She needs Nora. us. Nora. Listen to me. You don't hear anything. You you just think you hear because listen, you want to hear. Listen. I don't hear anything. There it is again. It's very faint, but you can hear it. If you try hard enough. Please, darling, try to rest. I've made an appointment for you with Dr. Cooper. I don't need a doctor. Now, now do you hear it? Who's calling me? Yes. Like it's coming from the cellar. I must go to her. No, no, don't. You mustn't. My little girl is calling. I must go to her. Was Ruth calling to her mother? 
Or was Paul Santfort falling into the clouded supernatural obsession that controlled Nora's life? He thought he heard the voice of his dead child calling to her mother. He couldn't be sure. But Nora's certainty was so strong that he was almost convinced that he heard it too. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Everything that Paul and Ruth Sanford believed in is being drained away. They are living in a nightmare of twisted emotions, pulled farther and farther from the normal life they had known into a tangled dreamlike world in which they hear the voice of their dead child calling to them. You're not going down into that cellar, Nora. It was Ruth's voice calling. Are you coming with me, Paul, or shall I go down alone? Nora, please. Now, we're dreaming this. It isn't happening. I heard her voice. You said you heard it. She was calling to me for help. Are you coming with me, or shall I go alone? I'll come with you, dear. Just to prove to you that there's nothing there. Nothing. How could there be? I know there is something there. Come. Now, wait, wait. Don't try to go down those steep cellar stairs in the dark. Turn on the light. It's out. It's not working. Here, let me try. Well, I'm not going down there in the dark. There's some candles in the cupboard just outside the door. Get them. Well, candles won't do any good. Get them. Uh, I just remembered. I, I've got a flashlight in the kitchen table drawer. Hurry! Here we are. Now stay right behind me. I'll go first. Flash the light around. No, there's nothing. Nothing but that crack in the wall. Let's go back upstairs, Nora. Good evening. <gasps> oh, what? Who are you? Oh, I'm sorry if I frightened you. What? Who are you? What are you doing in our house? Doing? I am inspecting the wall. The wall that needs repair. And who are you? Why, I'm the helper. What are you talking about, helper? Whom are you helping? You. I don't like this, Paul. Please make him go away. If, if you want me to, I'll go. But I thought you needed me. Now, I want you out of here. Or... I see you have a hammer in your hand. <laughs> You're afraid of me. Believe me, I came to help you. Who sent you? My, uh, employer. Who? Your friend. Your friend who knows of your sorrows. He sent me to seal up the crack in the wall. Well, I've tried. Several people have tried to do that. It won't stay closed. I can close it for you if you want me to. I repeat... If you want me to, you may not want it. Why? You will not hear the voice of your daughter ever again. No, no, no. Don't, don't seal it. Please. Nora. Now, maybe it would be best. No, no. No, this is insanity. Nora, our daughter is dead. Dead and buried. And you think that is the end? Of course. It's the end of mortal life. And do you share your husband's beliefs, Nora? No, no. Ruth was calling to me. I want her back. I, I want to hold her in my arms. Am I dreaming? This can't be happening. What are we doing standing here talking to this... Paul, please, don't. There's no one here. He was here? Where is he? He couldn't get past us up the stairs. Nora, where did he go? Who? Oh. D Nora, dar darling. What's happened to you? Speak to me, dearest. Speak. Paul. Paul. What are we doing here in the cellar? How, how did we get here? <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
And you say, Mr. Sanford, that you think you saw this uh, creature in the cellar of your house? No, it wasn't what you say. No, not a creature. It, it was a man, small, dwarf-like. He said he'd come to repair the wall. At three o'clock in the morning? Uh, you saw this man too, Mrs. Sanford? No. I don't know what Paul's talking about. I didn't see anything. I was fast asleep. Paul woke me and told the story. Mm, I see. Your daughter's death was a terrible shock to you both. It's, it's preying on your thoughts. Your grief pushed the normal day-to-day -day living from your minds. You began I to imagine... I heard her voice, Doctor. I heard Ruth's voice calling to me. Of course you did. But try to think rationally, Mrs. Sanford. You know it's impossible for you to have actually heard the voice of your dead daughter. Seriously, you can't believe you did, but can I, you? Uh, Seriously, can, can you believe that? I, I don't know. Mother, I need you. Help me, babe. My little girl. It's all so simple if you will recognize the true authority. Who are you? I am merely a conveyor of ideas, a messenger. Then you are sent by the devil? Perhaps. Perhaps I'm your friend. Uh, call me the helper. Can you help me? Can you bring my daughter back to me? Under certain conditions, but you might find the cost too high. What? Tell me. Nothing. Nothing is too costly, too terrible. I'll, I'll agree to anything. Even if it meant that you would lose everything? Everything you've been taught about life and death since you were a child? Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, I agree. I agree to anything. Anything just to help me save my child. Help me. Nora, Nora, wake up, Nora. You, you're having a bad dream, darling. Anything, I'll agree to anything. Darling, Nora. Oh, 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 Paul. You were crying out oh. in your sleep. I woke you. Paul, he came to see me and told me that I... Who, darling? That ugly little creature. I'd seen him before, but I can't remember where. The helper... That's what he calls himself. I heard Ruth calling to me. Then he appeared. I don't know what it is. I don't want to know. We're getting out of this house and we're not coming back. Oh, you go, Paul, but I can't. But don't you see what's happening to us here? Something evil is pursuing us either to destroy us or drive us insane. No. No, I can have my daughter back. He'll help me. You can't believe that. I believe it. What does he expect in exchange? I... I can't tell you, Paul. I, I just can't tell you. Oh, Dr. Fowler, right on time. Is um, Mrs. Sanford all... Uh, no. No, I called her sister and got her to make a date with Nora so she wouldn't be here. My work is suffering. We're not sleeping well. Nora's had terrible dreams, nightmares. You told your physician, Dr. Coombs? If anyone can help us, it's God. Dr. Fowler, we have seen the evil one. What? We have seen him. We have spoken with him. It's either the devil or one of his emissaries. He calls himself the helper. Uh, my good man, in this enlightened age, when we speak of Satan, it is usually, uh, well, what I mean to say is we, we think of the devil as the embodiment of all evil, but not as an actual being. I see. Well, Dr. Fowler, if you can't help us, we may have to go to someone who can. There are groups where they believe in the devil. Uh, Mr. Sanford, Paul, please understand. I cannot believe in the devil's being other than an abstract name for evil. If I can show him to you, 
Will you believe me then? I saw him. I have seen the devil and the devil's work, and I'm frightened to death. Sorry to bother you, Dr. Combs, but something very disturbing has happened. Yes? Uh, you know the two people I referred to you, the Sanfords? Yes. In your opinion, Dr. Combs, would you say that they were insane... Well, I don't know, Dr. Fowler. The word insane is a legal one, not a medical one. Well, deranged and mentally ill. Well, I would say from a very cursory examination that they were both suffering from severe emotional stresses brought on by the untimely death of their only child. Well, would that explain their hallucinations? Hallucination? Uh, to put it bluntly, Doctor, they think they have been speaking with the devil have seen him, in fact. Hmm, not exactly a common delusion in this day and age. If they need medical help, they must come to me. I can't solicit... Yes, the... yes, yes, I realize that, Dr. Coombs. Uh, perhaps a sanitarium would be the best place for them. They could be taken care of and have a change of scene to get over the grief that they feel. An excellent idea, Fowler, but who's going to commit them? Can you get them to commit themselves voluntarily? I don't know. I'll try. Have you come to any decision? I've been thinking about it. I've heard you say you would do anything to have your daughter back. You had made up your mind. Yes. Oh, yes, but... But still... You hesitate. What? What you asked of me is almost... Well, I'm almost afraid to think of it. It's been in my mind, awake and asleep. I, I can't tell the difference anymore. You hesitate. Thinking of yourself while your daughter suffers. Oh, no, no. I will leave you now. Perhaps never to return. This is your last chance. Oh. Nora. Oh, no, Nora, no, darling, no, listen me, to me. Help You're help having me. bad I'll, dreams. I'll do, I'll do wake, anything. Wake up, help please. Me. Nora, Nora, it's me, Paul. Oh. Oh, what? Open your eyes. No, You're all right. Know. You're safe with me. Darling, it's me, Paul. Yes, um, it's all right now. Paul, Nora. I've made my decision. What decision? About Ruth. I am going to bring her back. Bring her back? What are you saying? I'm going to bring her back, no matter what the cost, no matter what the consequences are. Nora and Paul have come far along a tortuous, a frightening path. Now Nora is determined to see the matter to the end, despite the consequences. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Forces are tearing at the sanity of Paul and Nora Sandford. Nora's sleeping and waking worlds are so much the same that she can no longer differentiate between them. In her thoughts, in her ears, are the words of her dead daughter calling to her for help. Paul thinks he has heard the child, too, but is uncertain. He is not sure whether or not it is the driving influence of his wife's obsession or what he has actually heard and seen himself. I don't know, Doctor. I, I don't know anymore. Everything is so confused. I want you to sign commitment papers for your wife. You mean put her in... In a good sanitarium, in a place where she'll be safe and, and receive the proper treatment for her... Uh, her, her problems. Well, I... I don't know. I... Now, I don't think she's crazy. You're not in any condition to judge her mental health, Mr. Sanford. What do you mean? 
Oh, well, I mean, I'm asking you to make a difficult decision. I'm also asking you to commit yourself. No! I won't think of it. Send him away. Send the doctor away. Paul, how can you do this to me? You know I'm not insane. You heard her. That night, we both went down into the cellar, and that little man... You remember? The helper? You saw him, too. You know I'm not crazy. I won't go. I won't. You can't make me. She's gone into the bedroom, Dr. Coombs. Is there a lock on the door? No. Well, suppose I go in. Perhaps a sedative to quiet her. No, please, doctor. Let me speak to her first. She'll listen to me. Very well. I'll, I'll wait out in the car if you want me. Yes, yes, please go. I, I think she'll listen to me. If you're not here. Nora? Nora? May I come in? Is that doctor still here? No, no, he's outside in his car. Paul, how could you do this to me? Deceive me, try to put me away. But I explained everything to you. I will never consent. I'm going with you, dear. I'm going in, too. Why? Paul, why do you want to do such a thing? Because I'm frightened. I've never been afraid in my life before, but this is all beyond me, beyond any rational explanation. And you think you'll be away from your fear in that place? Oh, Paul, I'm not out of my mind, and neither are you. How much longer can we stand this? Listen to me. What? I can tell you. Only you. What? I've made a pact with the helper. Oh, Nora. He has given me the power to bring Ruth back. You don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. That's impossible. Now, don't be foolish. Don't tell anyone else what you've told me. Now, you think I'm insane, too, don't you? I don't know what to think. He has given me two wishes. Two wishes? Yes. He said that I would need two. Actually, all I need is one. To bring my dear child back. Yes. Yes, Nora, of course. Now, now, I want you to do something for me. What? Don't fight me now. Go along with me for a little while. Perhaps this nightmare will stop. We'll be able to get out when we want to. I have the doctor's promise. Can you trust him? Yes, darling. Since we're committing ourselves, we can get ourselves released merely by asking to be released. And our poor tortured child, who will be here to hear her call? Who will be here to comfort her, Paul? We're running away, deserting her. Darling, Nora, our Ruth will be with us always, no matter where we are. Oh, the phone. Oh. Hello? Hello, Mr. Sanford? Yes. Dr. Coon? I'm calling from the sanitarium. Is there anything wrong? Yes. Your wife has disappeared. You mean walked out? Nobody saw her leave. As a matter of fact, it's a bit of a mystery. Her room was locked. Perhaps someone, one of the attendants or nurses unlocked the door for her. No, we've questioned the entire staff. At one o'clock, the nurse assigned to that section entered her room to administer a mild sedative. Your wife had complained she was worried because you weren't there. Well, I was just cleaning up a few urgent matters here. I was coming to commit myself tomorrow morning. I told her that, but it didn't seem to have any effect. When was Nora last seen? Not more than ten minutes before 1 a.m. Another nurse on the floor answered her ring. She told the nurse about her anxiety and her inability to sleep. She hasn't returned home, has she? No. What do you want me to do, doctor? Stay where you are. She may come home. It's very likely that she will come there. Emily, I'm sorry to be calling you at this hour, but 
Nora has disappeared. She walked out of the hospital. The fire, Ruth's death, it, it's been preying on our minds, and I thought that... Wait, Emily, I, uh, that's my doorbell. I'll call you back. I just wanted to know if Nora was with you. I'll call you back. Let me know if Nora shows up. Bye. Oh, Dr. Fowler. Come in. Oh, thank you. I got a call from Dr. Coombs about 20 minutes ago. Yes? He asked me to see him. He said you might need me. I came right over. Anything I can do to help? Nothing. Unless you can find Nora. She's been missing since about 1.30 a.m. About three hours. Where would she go? Where could she go? I don't know. What? What was that? I heard it, too. Do you have a cat, Paul? No. Sounded like a cat. It was Ruth. She's calling Nora. Ruth? My daughter. Oh, yes, yes, your daughter. But she's... She's dead. You hear your dead child's voice calling? You heard it, too. No. No, 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 it can't be. That's superstitious nonsense. That's what I thought. But I don't anymore. Ruth is calling to us from the grave. I hear it. I hear it. Paul, pray with me. Pray to God to make her go back. No. Nora will be here. She will come here and answer to her child's cries. Her mother's love is so strong that Ruth's outstretched hand will reach across the void of death and touch the hand of her mother. Yes? Fowler? Yes? I thought you were going to report back to me. I... Just been through the most shattering experience of my life. You saw Mrs. Sanford? No. I'm not a superstitious man, Dr. Coombs, but I heard the voice of Ruth Sanford calling to her mother from the grave. <laughs> Oh, Dr. Coombs. I, I thought it was Nora. She hasn't returned yet, huh? I was talking with your minister, Dr. Fowler. He seemed quite upset. Any word from the police? Nothing. They've gotten several false telephone tips from cranks. Only one man identified himself by name, a, a Mr. Helper. Helper? You know him? Yes, I know him. The police asked him for his address. He gave them one, but it proved to be a phony. Do you know where to find him? You won't believe this, Doctor. But the last place I saw him was in my cellar. What? I don't know how he got there. I, I didn't see him leave, although I was standing talking to him at the moment. He, he vanished. Vanished? Disappeared. I see. Uh, disappeared right before your eyes. Oh, yes, I remember you telling me about that incident when you both came to my office. Hello, who's there? Paul, I've come home. What is he doing here? I won't go back to that place. He can't make Nora, me go back. Nora, dear. Send him away, Paul. Paul, make him leave. We don't need him. Mrs. Sanford, as your doctor, You're I... not my doctor anymore. Please go! Leave us alone. Please, Dr. Coombs, your being here will just make her worse. Uh, very well, if you think you can manage. Yes, I can manage. I'm sorry you feel this way about me. Good morning. He was trying to do what he thought best for you, for us. He has no way of knowing what is best for us. He was just interfering, keeping us from Ruth. Nora, please give up that mad notion. Give it up? 
Oh, no. Paul, I will not give it up. Tonight, this morning before dawn, we will bring our child back to us. Nora, think what you're saying. I've thought, and I've made up my mind. Before daylight, he said. What time is it now? It's 20 after 4. It won't be light before 6. We must do it now. Come. We'll go together. Go where? To the place I first heard her voice, calling to me, the cellar, the crack in the wall. Are are you sure you want to go through with this? I think, Nora. I've come too far to turn back now. I don't care what happens to me. It's Ruth we must think of. All right, Nora, I'll go along. I'd better get my flashlight. The light's still out in the cellar. No, Paul. What I must do must be done in darkness. No lights. Now, let's go down the stairs. Now, Paul, don't say anything. I must ask for her life from the master. Oh, master, listen to my plea. I have paid dearly for this boon. Heed my request. And grant it to me in payment. I fear your presence, Master. But I implore you, grant my wish. I I wish my daughter were alive and with me now. My daughter, please give me back my daughter. Ruth, where are you? Come to me. I see. Oh, my God. Oh, no. No, no. Nora, stop this. Make her go back. Oh, Nora, she's burned. Her face is... Nora, please, can't you stop? Oh, help. Nora, send her back. Send her back. She's mutilated. She's mutilated. Disfigured. Nora, you can't bring her back into the world. You must send her back. Back to her grave. Two wishes. He said that you'd need the second. Now I know what he meant. Send no. Yes. I, I wish my dear daughter were dead and back in her grave. Nora. Oh. It's over. Oh. It's all over. Our child is gone forever. Oh, Paul. May our dear child rest in eternal oh. peace. And so Paul and Nora were left to pick up the fragments of their lives and go on. Strangely enough, the crack in the cellar wall was finally closed. And no human hand had a part in its repair. I'll be back shortly. The power of a mother's love cannot be measured by any instrument known to man. The supernatural strength to reach out into the void of darkness and bring back to life the child of her heart defies all the natural laws of nature. The answer can only be found in the terrifying world of the imagination, the world where anything the mind can conceive can happen. Our cast included Celeste Holm, Wes Addy, Robert Maxwell, Robert Dryden, and Ann Costello. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown.
This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>